subscribers. 99% of you are watching without subscribing. Don't miss out. Hit subscribe and like for real, unfiltered news the mainstream won't cover. Your support helps us keep bringing you the truth. Stay ahead with us. Piers Morgan's recent criticisms of Prime Minister Keir Starmer expose a significant disconnect between Starmer's public image and his actions. Morgan, known for his blunt, no-nonsense style, feels that Starmer's reluctance to engage in difficult conversations signals a troubling lack of transparency for someone in his position. Let's break down Morgan's main concerns with Starmer. Mm -hmm. from the raging uh, legal migration, which has gone from tens of thousands to 700,000 people last year, net legal migration, completely unsustainable. From alleged contradictions in Labour's message of equality to Starmer's evasion of direct questions on contentious issues. Starting with his criticism of Starmer's personal lifestyle, Morgan claims that Starmer's acceptance of high-end gifts and indulgence in luxury, like a costly apartment rental for his son, clashes with Labour's traditional working-class image. Labour has long represented fairness and support for everyday people. So Starmer's apparent detachment from average living conditions raises questions about whether he can genuinely relate to the struggles of regular citizens. Morgan's frustration grows as Starmer consistently sidesteps media requests, including invitations to Morgan's own show. Despite Morgan's experience in interviewing world leaders and tackling real issues, Starmer has reportedly dodged numerous opportunities to sit down and answer questions. For Morgan, this avoidance signals a lack of willingness to be open with the British public. It's a stance that only adds to his criticism of Starmer's priorities and decision-making style, especially as Morgan himself has frequently engaged in tough conversations with figures from President Zelensky to former U.S. President Trump. Further adding fuel to Morgan's critique is Starmer's stance on sensitive issues, such as gender and the Labour Party's approach to woke debates. Starmer has been known to deflect questions on gender, for example, once struggling to give a straightforward answer on whether a woman can have a penis. You and I don't completely drop agree about this. Yeah, it's obviously yeah. preposterous. But it's interesting to watch him change the positions. And now he's at, I think he now says 99% of women don't have penises, was his last statement on the thing. Morgan argues that Starmer's reluctance to tackle these hot button issues head on is a calculated attempt to avoid potential backlash. Starmer's briefing to his team to avoid such discussions altogether only solidifies Morgan's claim that he's sidestepping the cultural issues people want clarity on, further widening the gap between Labour's public stance and the topics it's willing to discuss openly. Morgan's critiques are echoed by other public figures as well. Jeremy Clarkson, Elon Musk, and Donald Trump have all voiced similar reservations about Starmer's policies and style of leadership, the exclusion of Elon Musk from Labour's investment events, despite his status as a global leader in innovation and the world's wealthiest man, suggests to Morgan a kind of selective exclusivity in Starmer's dealings, possibly rooted in personal bias rather than practical benefit for Britain. There's also the issue of taxation, where Morgan claims that Starmer has been vague on who will bear the brunt of Labour's proposed tax increases. Morgan, along with other critics, questions whether these tax hikes will genuinely benefit the middle and working classes, or if they're merely political moves without substantive relief for those struggling with rising costs of living. One of the most charged points Morgan raises is the controversy surrounding Tommy Robinson's jail sentence. But Islam is yeah. an idea. Yeah. Islam but, is an idea. But, a bad idea. And, it, and Islam Muslims is a faith. No, it's an idea. It's faith. a faith. It's an idea that you can change your mind. No, it's a faith. Like it, Christianity. Like Scientology. Robinson, a divisive figure, known for challenging the status quo, was handed a lengthy prison sentence, leading some, including Morgan, to question whether Starmer might be using legal measures to silence outspoken critics rather than addressing their concerns directly. This, Morgan argues, is symptomatic of a broader pattern in Starmer's leadership style, avoiding uncomfortable truths and criticisms rather than engaging with them, a stance that could backfire when dealing with assertive international leaders like Russia's Vladimir Putin or China's Xi Jinping. In sum, Morgan's criticisms paint a picture of a prime minister more invested in image management than genuine engagement with pressing issues. 
whether it's failing to address the financial burdens on everyday people, ducking interviews, or maintaining a lifestyle that seems far removed from his voter base. Year recently, his path to power is clear, but he still has to prove he knows what matters to the British people. And today, I believe he made a massive miscalculation. Morgan argues that Starmer is out of touch with the public he represents. As the leader of a historically working-class party, Starmer's perceived elitism and avoidance of real dialogue leave lingering questions about his capacity to lead with empathy and accountability. If Starmer truly wants to lead the UK, he'll need to start by facing tough questions, both from journalists like Morgan and from the citizens he aims to serve. Never forget that this opportunity is only here because we changed the party. Country first, party second. That isn't a slogan. It's the foundation of this project. The public wants more than scripted answers. They seek a leader who understands and stands with them, even when the topics are controversial or politically risky. Drop your thoughts in the comments, like, and subscribe to the channel for more straight talk on British politics. Message after message here and call after call uh, from people who are incredibly annoyed and incredibly put out that this man, Keir Starmer, and his administration seem to think that they can do whatever the hell they like and they don't really have to answer for it. Keir Starmer is facing a tidal wave of discontent from the British public, a growing frustration that's echoed from street corners to social media feeds, with more and more people questioning how much longer he'll last at number 10. Message after message, call after call, voices are rising across the UK, expressing anger at a leader who seems to think he can govern as he pleases, without real accountability. Starmer's rapid descent in the polls reflects this sentiment. With only a third of the public now holding a favorable view of him, his administration is teetering on the brink as his approval ratings plummet to new lows. Prime Minister Keir Starmer's ratings have dropped to their lowest level yet. According to a YouGov poll, only a third of people in the UK have a favorable view of him. Now For a man who was swept into power with high expectations and the trust of a population disillusioned by years of conservative rule, it's an astonishing fall from grace. Yet, it's becoming clear that even his staunchest supporters are losing faith. Wondering if their vote for Labour was, was a mistake, they'll be regretting for years to come. So Roger, what's he doing wrong? Uh, just about everything. Um, only 20% of people actually voted for him. Um, and his, his rating has really dropped. He has the opportunity um, after 14 years of really messed up, incompetent, unlistening Tory conservative rule. Imagine this, a chance, practically gift wrapped, to restore hope to a weary nation fed up with 14 years of Tory mismanagement. Starmer had the opportunity to be a hero, to actually listen to the public and make a difference. But instead, he's squandering it all, making decisions that not only alienate the public, but drive them further away. Labour, once the symbol of hope and change, is now becoming an emblem of missed opportunities and shattered promises under Starmer's watch. And the British people? They're left banging their heads against the wall, wondering if they'll ever see a leader who truly has their best interests at heart. Um, Keir Starmer and Labour have the opportunity to be real heroes. They could fix all of the many things that are wrong with this country uh, very quickly, some of them in an afternoon, and yet they are proceeding in totally the opposite direction and alienating huge sways of the British public. Adding insult to injury, Starmer's handling of critical issues like justice and freedom of speech has only served to enrage the public further. In a move that's been widely criticized, Starmer's administration has been releasing dangerous criminals back onto the streets citing overcrowded prisons as the reason. Yet, at the same time, people are being prosecuted for offensive posts on social media, as if harsh words are the real threat to society. This two-tier justice system is becoming more blatant by the day, with Starmer accused of clamping down on free speech while showing leniency to violent offenders. It's a surreal sight, and it's left many wondering if Orwell's 1984 isn't so much fiction as it is Starmer's rulebook. 
And if that weren't enough, his stance on taxation has turned into a brutal betrayal for the very people he claimed to champion.